What's up guys? It's Cass from Stone Mill Co. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are building this gorgeous river style coat rack. So before we get started, I do want to ask you to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can come back for more how-to videos. Now, this is a part one of two video of the build, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the first step is just getting my slabs ready for the deep pour mold. First, I am just making sure that both pieces are square to one another and cutting them to the same length. And the next step is debarking the slabs. Now, all I use is a chisel and a hammer, but there are plenty of other tools to do this as well. So I'll just scrape off the majority of the bark and then I will just hit it with my marker sander, use some 80 grit and clean that up. Now, I personally like a nice smooth look, so I try to get as much bark off as I possibly can. Okay, so now that I have these all cleaned up, it's time to head to the studio and start the fun part. Now, for this project, I am using my large mold from Crafted Elements as my base, but you can also cover a piece of MDF and use that as well. Either method, you will then follow these next steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and caulk all the inner sides of my wood as well as the sides of the wood. So for the next part, I'll just be closing off the ends of the river pour. Now, since I'm using my crafted element mold, I do not need to secure the one end, but for the other end, I'm just using a piece of scrap wood covered in tuck tape and making sure I caulk that as well. Now, since this is a small project, I do not need to use a brad nail or a screw or a clamp to secure that end piece, but I do suggest if you're working on a larger project that you do secure those end pieces some way. Now here I'm just putting some weight on that wood so that the caulking gets nice and sealed on the mold. Then I'm gonna come back 24 hours later once that caulking is nice and cured and get ready for my deep pour. So as always, I am using Moss Epoxy's deep pour. This system is a three to one system, so the first thing that I'm doing is just measuring the area that the resin will go in. I'm using a calculator on the Moss Epoxy's website that tells me exactly how much resin to pour of both parts A and part B, and I am measuring by volume. Next, you want to make sure that you are mixing thoroughly. This is a super important step. You wanna make sure that you're mixing slowly, but you wanna get rid of all those string-like striations before you add your mica powder. So you can use pigment or mica powder. I am using a mica powder for this project, I want to have that nice shimmery look and you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm again just mixing this mica powder in nice and thoroughly and now I'm getting ready to pour. Now after I get this all poured, you guys are going to see the shimmery kind of swirly look that I'm going for, but there is a method to this. Now this resin system cures in roughly 24 to 36 hours when you're working at roughly 70 degree Fahrenheit. Now, to get this swirl effect, you have to time the swirl motion perfectly. To keep the swirls from sinking, you wanna come back every few hours and swirl the resin. You wanna do this until the resin is thick enough or cured enough that the swirls will stay in place and not sink to the bottom. And again, this is gonna take about 24 to 36 hours depending on the temperature, the thickness of the pour, etc but we're gonna come back once it's all cured up and demold. So I am just using a rubber mallet to break off the ends and I'm just sticking a little screwdriver under there to pry it off gently. Once I have it out of the mold, it's time to square this baby up and then we're gonna get it planed. So once I have where I want to cut measured out, I'm just using a straight edge and clamping it to my piece and then I'll get all four sides cut and squared off. After this, we'll be heading to the planer and then we'll be jumping into part two of this video. So if you're following along, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and look out for part two.